Mike Clifford here and today I'm going to show you how I created this sleek looking white concrete side table with a spalted maple live edge inlay. For this project I used a glass fiber reinforced concrete mix. This type of mix is a really cool way to open up a lot of creative possibilities as far as different shapes, sizes, and colors of concrete designs. I found the wood slab on eBay, which was really inexpensive, and I was surprised at their selection. Since we're doing a precast concrete form here, the first thing I did was to cut the base for my form out of a sheet of melamine. If you haven't worked with concrete much, melamine is great for making concrete forms since it's waterproof and the concrete won't stick to it. Since the base is the exact size of the tabletop, I used the base to mark where I needed to cut my slab to the exact length on each side so that it would line up perfectly with the sides of the table. Now when I pour the concrete, I'm going to be pouring it right over the slab inside of the form. Because of this, it was important that I seal the wood beforehand so that it doesn't absorb water from the concrete in the form, which could lead to all kinds of problems. I finished this slab with a water-based wipe-on polyurethane, but you can use whatever type of waterproof finish you like. Then I set the slab aside and went to make the rest of the form. I wanted the table to be one and three quarters inches thick, so I cut the sides of the form at 0.75 inches thicker than that so that they could attach to the sides of the base and still have 1.75 inches extending above the base. I then pre-drilled and screwed the sides of the form to the base of the form with some drywall screws that I had lying around. I wanted to take a moment here and remind you that if you like the builds that I'm doing on my channel, please take a moment and click that little button at the bottom right of the screen to subscribe to my channel so you can get notified about all my future builds. So after attaching the sides, I gave the slab a test fit in the form just to make sure it fit. Then it was time to apply 100% silicone caulk to seal the inside edges. And what I'm showing you here is a really cool trick for getting absolutely perfect silicone lines in your form. First thing you're going to do is apply a layer of paste finishing wax to the entire form. Then you apply your bead of silicone caulk to all the edges and you can really do this as sloppily as you want. It doesn't matter. Then you can go back with a tool called a cake fondant, which is actually intended for decorating cakes. And it has a steel ball at the end. And you run that around all the edges. And it's going to leave a white line between a center part of the silicone uh, that you can then tear away the part that oozes out later. So you can see here the perfect part in the middle and then the parts that have oozed out on the top and the bottom are separated that you can pull away. So then you just go back and you literally they come right off and that's because you put the face finishing wax down first and when you pull them off it leaves you this really just perfect amazingly satisfying uh, silicone edge and, and it's really easy it's much easier than trying to use painters tape or razor blades or any other technique I've tried. And you can see here, it really just left beautiful caulk lines. I then used mineral spirits to clean the wax off the form to make sure it didn't leave any residue on the concrete when I poured it. First, I mixed up the face coat for my glass fiber reinforced concrete. And the face coat doesn't have any glass fiber reinforcement. It is just a thin coat uh, of cement, sand, some polymer and some admixes that make it very flowable that gives you a really fine smooth surface and you actually spray this with a hopper gun similar to what you'd spray drywall with. Now you know the mix is ready for spraying when it gets to a very thin pancake like consistency and drips off your trowel that you're mixing with but still has just a little bit sticking to it because you want it to stick to the side edges. And before you start spraying, you're gonna 
do a test spray on a sheet just to make sure everything's coming out smooth. And when you spray your form, you're going to spray the corners first and then the edges, and then you fill in the middle. And this is so that sand particles don't bounce off and get stuck in the edges and the corners and create voids in your concrete. As soon as you get done spraying your face coat, you're going to grab a chip brush and work the concrete into the edges and corners and just brush the surface. And this is to get any air bubbles out of the concrete. You do this instead of having to vibrate the form or anything. You don't vibrate with GFRC. You just are going to use the chip brush to make sure you remove any bubbles as you see I'm doing here. You then wait for 30 minutes or so until your face coat has firmed up to the touch but is still slightly wet so that the back coat will stick to it and you mix the back coat. And the back coat mix is going to be identical to the face coat mix except that you're going to add the glass fibers to that mix as your aggregate uh, and this will be really strong, really stronger than any kind of mix you would make where you have rebar. It's not necessary when you make GFRC. Now, one of the ingredients you can add when you're making GFRC is a plasticizer uh, and that is going to be something that makes the concrete very fluid without having a lot of water water reduces strength of the concrete and so it results in a really strong concrete mix that can still flow so you'll see here when I when I put this in it really flows and this is also what is sometimes called a self consolidating or self leveling mix uh, because it really just kind of flows and evens out and it fills in all the nooks and crannies and you don't have to vibrate it which is really nice now I'm not giving a whole lot of details about the mix here. I'll put an easy recipe in the description for GFRC, but there are some new products that have come to market recently that I'm really excited about that really make GFRC uh, accessible for the beginning DIYer. And I'm gonna have another video down the road where I explain how those products work. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, or shoot me a message if you will have any questions or need help with your own GFRC project. So after filling the form and making sure the edges are nice and level, I let the form sit overnight for about 24 hours. GFRC depends on your temperature, but you can demold it much more quickly. And sometimes you can get away with 14, 16 hours. Uh, I like 24 hours just to be safe. The best part of any concrete project is when you debold and you get to see that surprise underneath and what you made. So I just pulled off the form, it came off really easy this time, uh, remove all the silicone that can hold it in place and then I pulled out the slab so that I could sand and finish it. So I first took a diamond sanding pad and just smoothed out the edges and then I just used a 400 grit sanding pad wet sanded it really quickly. That's a, it's a really quick way to do uh, finish on a uh, piece of GFRC. And then I took a 600 grit pad and sanded it down a bit more before applying the concrete sealer uh, to the tabletop. Of course, before you apply the sealer, you're going to want to get out your shop back make sure the surface is nice and clean so that when you apply the sealer it goes on smooth. And I'll put a link to some sealers that you can use that are fairly inexpensive in the description. Overall I'm pretty happy with how this came out. A friend of mine who I work with who's a fellow patent attorney actually does steel work and he made some really cool steel legs for me and I think they really worked well with this table and brought it all together. And of course, if you like this video, please click that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.